Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, we're going to talk about Shadow Network, a brand new game currently on Kickstarter from our friends at Talon Strike Studios. In this game, you're going to be doing your very best to explore various regions of the world, gathering intel, turning that intel into documents and briefcases that you're then filing to collect victory points or collect the most information you can on your opponents. This is going to be a 1-5 to five player worker placement and set collection game. And in this preview, I'm going to do my very best to explain how things function here on the table and what your experience playing might be like, so you can decide if it's one that you want to add to your collection. In the Shadow Network, like I said, you're going to be running a covert group of detectives. You're an agent, exploring different regions of the world, gathering information from all of these different zones. You're sending out your little workers, gathering different types of documents, and then combining those documents into a briefcase or something that you're filing for more information. You'll be using your handlers to maximize the information you're gaining, along with opening various contracts on people that you want to investigate a little bit more, either to score some immediate victory points uh, or gain some intel throughout the course of your play. The main game is going to be composed of two core elements. The worker placement phase where you're taking actions and also spreading resource across this map that your opponents or you could go and pick up at a later point. And then also filing, cataloging, and going through the process of compiling your set collection units. The object of the game is to score the most victory points or have the most documented intel by the end of a session, and a session is going to last a total of four rounds. You'll score victory points from the contracts that you're able to close and the uh, intel that you have collected or the coins that you've collected throughout the course of play. You'll be spending coins to activate some special abilities, but then also gaining coins as you play and complete objectives. Along with that, the uh, contract cards that you have in your hand may end up scoring you negative victory points if you're not able to close them by the end of a session. And so the decision between how much you go for, how quickly and how early, versus what you're actually able to do and position here on the board is a constantly shifting puzzle that you're always trying to gauge. The numbers at the very end may in fact come down to some of the cards that you just weren't able to close out. So the first core part of this game is going to be the worker placement part where you are taking a single action with one of your available workers and going to one of these different regions on the board. When you go to that region, you have a few different opportunities. First off, you may be going to a basic region where you're going to collect the resource at the top and then spread or proliferate other resources to various locations on the board. So for instance, if I went up here, I would gain two yellow briefcases or two yellow documents. They'd go into my storage up top here and I would gain one green. I would then spread intel that other players or myself could pick up at later stages in the game. I have to spread one green to an A location, and I have to spread one blue to a C location. This is going to make those locations slightly more valuable for whoever goes there next, because they will immediately pick up whatever resource is just sitting on the map. Now there are two other options that you could explore here on the board. You could also go to a location that has one of these little black market tokens at it. That means you're going to be able to take a black market action. This is going to provide you with a few different opportunities. You could exchange some of your intel for different or higher level or harder to get intel pieces, the various colors as they scale up. You could spend some of your influence for another worker who you'd get to place an open contract card you can draw from the marketplace here that scores you victory points if you're able to complete them, or a handler, which will be one of these tokens. They have a limited use, and they predominantly can be utilized to turn some of your current intel into other or different pieces of information. You bring them some facts about a local bakery, and they let you know that they've seen a shady figure visiting that bakery on his computer every Thursday of the week. That's the core worker placement phase of the game. The last thing that you have to be aware of is if you go to a location with an opponent's worker, which you are able to do, you will have to spend one intel point paying them for the ability to go there. I mean, they see you walking down the street, they gain a little bit of information on exactly what's happening here in the city. That is the core first part of your turn. 
making decisions on where you want to go, what resources you need to collect, and more importantly, what resources you're giving to the opponent sitting around the table. Because the more you interact on this board, the more you're going to spread opportunity for everyone else to utilize. But the more opportunity there will be for you to also collect data, collect information, and accomplish your task. Now, during your opponent's turns, you're going to have a little bit of min-maxing to do here on your player board. This will keep the flow of the game, the pace of the game, up and running while you're making decisions around what you want to spend resource on. You see, down here on your board, you can convert some of the information you have into various types of briefcases. These are where you pull documents together and you're ready to file something officially. You can also, like I said, spend resources to activate one of your handlers here they will turn resources into other colors and types. For instance, if I spent three yellow down here on Samantha Sharp, she would be able to convert those into one blue, which would then be on my board. From that point on, I can look over here on my board while other people are playing, and I could place some briefcases down. Let's say I had three blue that I needed. That would combine into a single briefcase, which would then go over onto my main board. At that point, I'm looking at the contracts that I have in my hand. You see, each contract is going to have a variety of options, either discarding to give you immediate intel or completing a contract. Now, these are going to score you three different types of victory points. More victory points if you complete them during the course of the game. Less victory points if you complete them, but it's at the very end of the game during the last upkeep phase. And negative victory points if you still have them in your hand and you're unable to complete them. So here, with uh, SN678547, uh, the intel that I need is going to be one green, one blue, and two blue-green. So when I'm able to transfer those briefcases off of my board, I will replace them with gray briefcases, meaning the intel has been filed, and I have claimed this card. You can only ever spend briefcases once, which is why you replace them with a gray token indicating that you've still blocked that location, but you've also used it to complete a contract. Now, there are some hashed lines on this board as well. Those will also be important. Those are called milestones. When you reach a milestone location, you have the opportunity to do three different things. Either immediately collect three intel, when you cross one of those lines, discard, a card from your hand, meaning that you're gonna take the intel at the top of it and you're not worried about completing that contract or losing points anymore. And finally, complete a contract, which is like I was saying, where you file one of these briefcases and uh, turn a contract in, scoring yourself some victory points during the course of the game. And overall, that's gonna be the heart of this game. It really isn't overly complicated, but combines worker placement and set collection in a very intricate and thinky way, which is something that I think Talon Strike Studios has done very well in the past. They usually have some sort of twist on that worker placement mechanic that provides a dynamic and interesting game, and I really have enjoyed digging into this one. I like the way that resources spread across this map. I like the different opportunities to use the intel that you're getting, the way that you cycle them through various different sifts in order to convert them to what you need so that you can complete the contracts that you've collected. I also like the way scoring works in this game. Straight up victory points, intel that scores you immediately, and then three different simple but important scoring conditions on the contract cards you've accepted. Every time you play this game, every time you dip back into it, you're always trying to adjust to what contracts are available, what have I agreed to do, and what am I doing here on the rest of this board? How am I impacting my own play, and throughout the course of the game, how am I impacting other people's play? This game has a lot of good things going for it in a simple, dynamic package. So, if you like worker placement, if you like set collection, if you think the theme of this seems intriguing, swing over to the Kickstarter page, dig into it a little bit, let me know your thoughts, feel free to ask any questions you have down in the comment section down below, and if you do end up deciding to back Shadow Network, make sure you leave a quack over in the Kickstarter comments, I'll be there doing my very best to respond to you. Whatever the case, hopefully you've enjoyed this preview, uh, whatever you do though, Remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.